Hello, good uh, evening to everybody. Um, I cannot see all of you because of this, but uh, I believe that you're there. Um, so what I would like to talk to start talk about the design. I mean, um, at the model of design today, it's quite uh, um, trendy. I mean, there are a lot of young people that would like to be a designer, to become a car designer. So if you would, do that, if you would like to do it, okay, just go on the net or on the books, you will get a lot, really a lot of issues talking about the design, how to design, how to sketch, how to make a perfect sketches with the perspective, um, construct it. Everything is devoted to make it the uh, perfect drawings, the proportions. Uh, they, they tell you how to use the wheels to have a good proportion of a car, of side view of the car. Also the perspective with the Y0 relying to have a good proportion between the windscreen, the bonnet, the tails, how to make a really good rendering. But I think that in, in, in the net, as a box, as a manual, there is, doesn't exist anything that talks about who is the designer, I mean, which is the relationship between the designer and the car. Because this is the main task. This is the focus, this is the, the point. What is the link between the designer and the car? So, what is a car, first of all? A car is a creature. A car is something that somebody that just attracts you, attracts your, your emotion as a designer, as a creator. Love that is natural in our uh, DNA, I mean, as a human being, since we are a child. Uh, uh, that's me. I was on the, on the red car, yeah. Uh, it is exactly like uh, nothing net, no books tell you how to love a car. It's the same as uh, when, when you, somebody, some nice male is, uh, well, I suppose it's a nice male, is attracted by a nice woman. I mean, do you think he searched in the net or in a book to understand how to be attracted by that girl? I don't think so. Something happened in, in the emotional sphere inside, which stopped making pumping your heart at 12,000 RPM like a flat 12 Ferrari. I mean, you never search of it, it just happened. And this is what happened also to me, and that's, this is what should happen without anybody tell this to all the car lovers that would like to be a designer to extend this relationship with the design with cars. When I was young, I used, a kid, I used to read a, a cartoon strip in Italy, famous, it was called the Diabolic. But honestly, I was not interested at all about the history, the story there, the, how many people he killed, how many jewelry he wrapped. I was interested in the drawing of the Jaguar type. I bought that book because I was in love with that car. It was my dream to have a relationship with that car, the fantastic Jaguar, the E-type Jaguar. So for that reason, I started to be more involved. And I felt like I also tried to, to design to sketch. And the, the racing is part of this love, because it's the most, uh, uh, how can I say, um, obvious emotional relationship with the cars, the racing. So I started to go and watch the hill climbs close to my nice, beautiful Sicily. I'm still in love with the Sicily, except of cars. And uh, hill climbs in Sicily were fantastic. You could see cars that you could see on the road every day. And then I decided to move to turn my own Fiat 500 as a racing car. Then I started to race to feel 360 degrees of relationship with a car, with this creature which can talk. You can have a talk with it. All my cars has a name. I talk with, with them by name. I call them by name. So 
I started to feel something which is, yes, something that goes more. I felt like to sketch, to create my own cards, my own cages. So I was 15 at the time. I still have that sketches my father kept for me. And I tried to create something new, not copy, but creating something that comes from my emotion. How I would like to sit behind a wheel of card that I have been created. And uh, also the Jagger. This is the only card that was existing because I was still in love with that card. The big changement came when I went to see the Targa Florio. Um, I think uh, some uh, enthusiasts of uh, car. It was fantastic because one lap of that race was uh, 62 kilometers. So all the drivers coming out from all around the world to learn that road, that track, had to spend one week there to test it, to test it, try to memorize it. And that was wonderful because you could see such a situation where there's, you know, in, in the Ape, the three-wheeler. Well, in Italy, we already had it. And that, that is a situation where you can see the Alfa Romeo 33 uh, sport, which was testing the truck and crossing with the Ape Piaggio. It's incredible. Then I could see the Porsche, could see the, the Ferrari, all the top cars. I could start getting into the feeling of what is the car at the really top level. But I was very ignorant. I didn't know how to become a car designer. I thought that to be an engineer, I could create a car. So my, um, I started to think of who was the creator of this car. And uh, you, you can see here Enzo Ferrari with Mauro Forghieri, which was father of Ferraris. He was my god, because he was uh, um, creating the F1 and the sport prototype of uh, Ferrari. What was the most important thing for the enthusiasts uh, enthusiast people of uh, cars was a Ferrari. But knew, no one thought of who was behind Ferraris. So he was my god. I was dreaming to, to know him, to do things with him, to do things like him. So then I realized that to, he was the creator also of racing cars, but road cars, because Ferrari are unique car because it's not. A, a, just a road car. Ferrari was a racing car, which you could use also on, on, on the road because some VIP of the United, uh, United States asked to Enzo Ferrari, please, can I go to the bar with your car? So Enzo Ferrari said, yeah, okay, we'll try to do it. And so he, Enzo Ferrari used to create these Ferraris, which could be a racing car. They were pure racing car, but you could see also the road which is fantastic to, to LM, which was also a racing car. Then I decided that I need to be really closer to that creature, to express my love for that creature. I was becoming mad for this. Then, in the future, I could work with him. This is um, Mauro Fulgier, a little years later, but I could match with him. We could create things together. And it was absolutely fantastic to work with this fantastic person. Then uh, we, we, did some, we did some work for a, uh, for a Subaru concept, with uh, just working on the um, platform, turning the platform, and this is all technical stuff. But the emotion to work with them was fantastic. Then I started also to think about my Fiat 500. I said, why it has to be like uh, it was at the beginning? Just give a little bit of more uh, technology to work it. And then I created this um, Group 5 Fiat 500. It's still that. It's not the same car. It's not just a makeup. It was a dip work on it. But I could make it. And it has a still the record of the Pergusa race truck, which was still is on. No other cars beat that, that record. I'm glad of it. Uh, and my brother followed to, to, uh, to race with that car because I could not. I was in Turin at Pininfarina. Because when I went to Royal College of Art, which was a very important thing, I could realize that I could be really a designer. The consciousness, this is very important. The consciousness to be somebody and 
what you can do in your life for what you're doing. Then I went with my colleague of RCA, now they are all very good position and they are automotive world physics, what I'm really like. And then I went to work to Finifarina. And in Finifarina environment, I felt really close to my dreams. I could feel that my dreams were very close to be realized, reality. And this happened when a special project came. You remember the Jaguar I was talking before? Yeah, we had a project to design the successor of the E-Type Jaguar. So for me, it was unbelievable. I said, uh, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it. So I started to think how to make it. At that time, we made a, um, automa uh, an aerodynamic uh, experiment to have uh, the uh, ideal shape of a car which has the less CD on the air impact, which we used to call porcellino. Porcellino means a small pig, because as you can see, has the expression of a small uh, pig. You know? So that was to give a technology to something which was supposed to be beautiful. As an inspiration, I went to the dolphin, because dolphin is one of the most beautiful creatures on, on the sea. It's elegant as a beautiful balance, the surface is incredible. And it has also feelings, emotions, as a communication possibility with the human beings. So I said, yeah, dolphin, I feel it. So I started with a dolphin shape on top, as you can see, which I moved a little bit, a little bit close to a car, which is supposed to be my new jack. And then I started sketching quick sketching, try to understand how the dolphin could be with four, by four wheels. You know, can you can imagine a dolphin with by four wheels? Yeah, I, I tried to imagine it. That's ideation. This is very important in any design and creation. And then I finalized with the final rendering, put together all the proportion, all the chassis and things were already done by Pininfarina uh, technicians. And then the prototype was realized. That time when I got that picture inside the car, well, you can see I had a black hair, it was three, three, three years ago, was the really strong emotional day. I couldn't believe that. I was working at Pini Farina since two years at that time. It was 1978 when I did that. And I said, wow, this is my way. This is a confirmation that I was right. And then all the prototypes went to different uh, events. But then this is the difference of Ferrari and Jaguar, which is, it comes out when I, I had to work about the Testarossa. Testarossa, as all Ferraris, for me it's linked to the reality of the high technology which is used in the most advanced environment of car automotive, uh, which is the F1. The top of technology, you can see, you can feel, you can use it in F1. So my relation, my benchmark to create, to, to go towards the Testarossa design, uh, what was going on in the environment of F1. Early 80s, the uh, F1 had the ground effect, and uh, it's so, so technical, so uh, I don't talk about that. But my inspiration was this. F1 Ferrari was the T4, the 312T. And this was the part that engaged, engaged me in doing something new. Radiator here, and this line, this shape, because it has a shape here, which was very important, very nice, very new. I was a crash, is it crash test here? No. And then I started quick sketches. I tried to move this sculpture of the side view, this beautiful curvature, into a three-dimensional view. Then I, that like this, I thought something more advanced, like the miniskirt. You, miniskirt is, is, not, is not anything oh, concerning sex. Oh, Don't worry, they do not go on the uh, airport, so you are sure. <laughs> um, um, this part here was called a miniskirt because 
uh, used to keep the air inside for the pressure, all things like this, boring things. Uh, you remember, do you, anyone knows the uh, Porsche 911? Okay, Porsche 911 had a special feature which over a certain uh, speed, a rear spoiler would rise up automatically. Is also yours like this? Okay, okay. So, I thought to use the same concept, but instead of rise up the uh, rear spoiler, just um, push down the miniskirt. <laughs> Those miniskirts. Okay. Um, so, uh, this would happen after uh, over 200 kilometers per hour, which means you were in a nice road, an expressway. Um, and then we moved for some sketches, more to identify the car more uh, two dimensionally. And then the prototype was tested at the wind tunnel. And as you could see, a lot of work was done on the side views for this radiator backwards, because until that day, all, for, uh, all the cars, the sport cars, it has a radiator in front, because the air comes from, from the front. This was the first car which had radiator on the side. And it worked perfectly, so that we went on production, and as you can see, has a strip, has a bar on the side, which was not before. But this is not styling. It becomes an icon, but the, those strips were because of uh, safety regulation for U.S. You, in U.S., you cannot have open space. You need to protect for some extent of the position. So, uh, Pininfarina Ferrari had to put those uh, strips in a very nice way. So, I also be thinking about the uh, Roadster version, uh, which had also some success in movies in, um, in U.S. I think it's some, I don't remember the name, some, somebody anyway. Um, so I'm out of Ferrari, but the time is very short. Uh, I would need uh, three hours, but uh, I promise to be short and quick like a Ferrari, so forget about it. Uh, this is to tell you that uh, a designer has to be in love with his product, with his creature, like Michelangelo was. Michelangelo went and designed this Moses. After he finished it, he had a hammer, and he threw the hammer to the knee of that statue, saying, why you don't speak? He wanted it. So a designer should not throw a hammer on the car, because we were in it, but should say, why you don't move? So if a designer has this emotion, he can surely go whatever he likes. He will be succeeded with the new creature. This is all. Thank you.